There's stuff going on in Lansing, and I'm always happy, as you know, to come and talk to you about what is happening in Lansing. Uh, this week um, is um, was a somewhat slower week because last week we did the budget. You know, the budget is the biggest thing we do in the whole year. It's the most important responsibility we have. And uh, because of the recovering economy and because of, uh, frankly, the rescue of the auto industry by President Obama, for the last couple of years, Michigan's economy has been doing better. And so as a result, there are uh, increased revenues, particularly increased, increased sales tax revenues in the school aid fund. And that makes uh, the budget process this year considerably easier. And there wasn't, a, uh, there wasn't the kind of cuts we saw in the last two years. So uh, K-12 got a small, small bump, 2%. It doesn't, um, doesn't really replace what they took out a couple years ago. We're still looking at K-12 funding levels from 10 years ago, which certainly doesn't keep pace with inflation. But uh, at least we didn't see another decrease this year. The recovering economy means we saw a small increase. Uh, we're also seeing uh, small increases for our cities, and, and that's good for, for Ann Arbor. Um, and we're also seeing small increases for higher ed. Unfortunately, though, for higher ed, the Republicans did see fit to keep in all their ideological requirements and gates for the universities to get their funding. They still have to report their stem cell research. They still have to deny benefits to LGBT employees and um, a number of other things that the Republicans feel is important uh, for them to get the increased funding. So uh, there's good and the bad in the budget, of course, uh, but we did that last week. So this week was a little slower. The big issue this week was changes to Michigan's curriculum. Right? So a few years ago, Michigan uh, updated its Michigan Merit curriculum to try to increase the standards for graduation in Michigan to make it more rigorous. And um, some of uh, the northern Michigan legislators particularly are frustrated that, that these new requirements are crowding out things like ag science or um, career technical education that used to be called vocational education. And so there was a bill introduced to basically allow districts to eliminate the foreign language requirement uh, and eliminate the um, Algebra II requirement in favor of um, other, other programs like the ones I just mentioned, vocational ed um, and um, ag science and uh, anatomy is another thing they're allowing to, to substitute. And they did say in the bill that the, um, the substitutions had to have some, some sort of uh, reasonable relationship to the, 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 the educational area that they were that they were relaxing, but um, not so for foreign language. There's really nothing to replace foreign language. Uh, so that is, a, I think, a going the wrong direction for our state. I certainly voted against that, but that passed this week um, with, with a pretty broad majority, actually. Uh, the idea that folks, uh, that school districts need more flexibility to schedule in the high school environment because the required credit hours are so dense that there's not a lot of room, I think that's an idea that has a lot of cash in the legislature. And frankly, I agree with that. That's why uh, when the bill went up, I put up an amendment to um, create flexibility uh, for the school districts to push the foreign language down to an earlier age because the research says that um, foreign language wires kids' brains to learn, it helps them in all their other subjects, and the earlier they get it, the more of those effects you have. So the uh, amendment I put up actually increased Michigan's foreign language requirement to two foreign languages, pushed it down into the K-8 environment, and appropriated an extra $1,000 per pupil because I know the real reason why foreign language is getting pitted against vocational ed is because our school districts just don't have the resources they need to deploy the types of programs that are needed in their mm -hmm. community, right? I mean, vocational ed, welding, um, um, uh, learning how to operate a CNC mill, these are great educational programs that should be available to high schoolers in Michigan, of course, uh, but I, I just don't feel like we should be uh, um, reducing our other requirements and <coughs> diminishing the, uh, the academic rigor in our schools to make room for those kinds of uh, programs. Those programs should be additional and they should be add-ons to the, the main educational program. So while the most successful places in the world, the most dynamic economies, uh, the places where people are happiest uh, are adding requirements uh, to, their, to their curriculum and trying to make, uh, trying to spiral in these advanced concepts at earlier and earlier ages, here we have in Michigan an effort to diminish the requirements and, uh, and, and, and lessen the rigor in our schools. So uh, that was the big issue this week, and um, always happy to come and uh, see what's going on, and hopefully we'll have a lively debate. I don't see Mike yet, so I'd be happy to take any questions if anybody has any questions.